finding a place you can call home is not just about living with the basics. With Data Land, it goes beyond and creates dwelling places that bring the world outside right at your doorstep, allowing you to access its many pleasures and conveniences with ease. Dataland believes that beyond a place to stay, home is space to be yourself. Where time is your own, to be in your own zone, or to share with loved ones. That's why Dataland is ready to put its name on its own kind of residential offering. One that embraces life as it should be. <laughs> Cherished. Balanced. Guided by values. Driven by purpose. Dataland aims to help you conquer the challenges of daily life. with comfortable residences that are built to last Morning. and that nurture your soul and your progress. And that's our marketing strategy. At the end of the day, it's all about building your brand. I like it. Congratulations. Thank you. Good work. Good job. Introducing Dataland Residentials living beyond the basics. With Dataland Residentials, you can count on our high five with every property. Locations that are central and convenient. Top-notch amenities that build communities and enrich life. High quality materials and workmanship at great value for money. Dedicated property management to ensure quality living while preserving your investment's value. And the DDT Constract Seal of Durability, so you're sure your home is built to last. Let's put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty and merciful Father, who show your love to all your creation, we come before you asking for a quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging our world. Hear in various parts of the world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. We pray that an effective medicine to combat the sickness be speedily found. We pray for the relevant governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. Look upon us in your mercy and forgive us our sins. This we ask through, your, uh, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes from now, we will listen to industry expert, Mr. Cash Salvador, and learn practical tips on property investing in the new normal. With the pandemic currently affecting economies around the world, many countries attempt to balance health and economic interests. As a result, nearly every industry has taken a hit in crisis. But what does this mean for the real estate market? Simply put, is it safe to invest? This afternoon's webinar will help us see manifold opportunities and have a higher confidence in real estate investing as a much safer and practical investment during a crisis that will benefit individuals, investors, entrepreneurs, and businesses for the long term. We encourage everyone to take down notes. We are excited to hear your questions and feel free 
and we will let Cash answer them after their talk. This is the third webinar of our Quality Life series, Data Land Residentials Living Beyond the Basics. Get to know Data Land Incorporated, a subsidiary of DDT Construct Inc. DDTKI delivers proven quality beyond the basics. Its parent company is an industry leader. Quadruple A certified, ISO certified. DDTKI has helped build residential and office buildings for all the top developers in the Philippines. SM Prime Holdings, SMDC, Ayala Land, Robinson's Land, Mega World, Vista Land, Taft Properties, Full Invest, Eaton Properties. DDTKI's expertise is complemented and enhanced by its very own state of the art precast facility, the Data Precast System. All its construction needs. Completed projects, SM Light Residences, Pico de Loro Beach and Country Club, Globe Telecom Headquarters, Ayala Mall Greenbelt 5, Robinson Cyberscape Beta, The Podium Ortigas, BDO Ortigas Tower, Ayala Mall Glorieta 5, Robinson's Tryon Towers, Singapore Airlines Hangar, C. New Valley Retail Center, Cebu Exchange Tower, City Sports Club Cebu, Somerset Serviced Residences, SM Supercenter Molino, SM Shell Residences, SM Mall of Asia, Ayala Underpass, Vista Hub BGC, SM Supercenter Muntinlupa, SM Cagayan de Oro Premier 2 Ayala Acapulco SM Mall of Asia Ayala Mall Centrio and Seda Hotel Ayala Mall Abriza World Health Organization Headquarters Horizons 101 Cebu SM City Tugigarao The DDT group of companies is Consumer focused Value driven Innovative DDT Construct Inc. is recognized for its track record of superior quality and timely The DDT Group delivers proven quality beyond the basics. Whiteport Inc. is a AAA construction firm The Taj Aqua Farm Incorporated ensures sustainable aqua farm practices for the Filipino. Agri Waras Company ensures sustainable food security in the country. Andres P. Tamayo Senior Foundation Incorporated is committed to sustainable corporate social responsibility. Whiteboard Inc. Triple A Certified. Founded in January 14, 2009. Marco Polo Residences Cebu. 100 West Makati by Full Invest. Glass Office Building. Uzumi Building. Centrio Mall. Port Boulevard by Mega World. Shine Residences by SMDC. The Taj Aqua Farm Incorporated. Founded in 2009. First in the country to be certified best in agriculture practices. Now developing semi-integrated system with hatchery, intensive grow-out farms, processing plant, and export facilities. Agri Juarez Company focuses on rice production, natural products, and raises poultry and swine as support businesses. The company acquired 231 hectares of prime land in northern Luzon. Andres Pitamayo Senior Foundation, the corporate social responsibility arm of the DDT group of companies, raises funds for the benefit of underserved communities to lift them out of poverty and create livelihood for the future. 
Handog Education Scholarship Program. Handog Gan. Malnutrition Feeding Program. Handog Gabay Responsible Parenthood. Handog Dugo Blood Donation Program. Handog Bendisyon Mass Wedding Program. Data Land Inc. The real estate arm of the DDT Group, founded in October 2011. Founding officers, Engineer Danilo D. Tamayo, Chairman, Rosaleo M. Montenegro, Tamayo Ulev, President. The Data Land Quality Seal reflects its commitment to quality beyond the basics in design, deliverables, construction, turnover, and customer service. Milestones. Data Land Inc. was incorporated in October 2011. March 2013, launch of the Silk Residences. October 2014, launch of the Olive Play Shop. In January 2018, the company launched its residential brand, Data Land Residentials 2019. Launch the Ivy Wall Hotel, Most International Chain Resort in Panglao Island, Bohol. April 2019. Launch of the Mirren Enclaves in Puerto Princesa, Palawan. June 2019. Launch of Data Land's most iconic tower in Quezon City, the DDT Sky Tower. September 2019, launch of MyCube in Binyan Laguna. Master Plan Townships, Tugagarao, Cagayan Province. Data Land Residentials, the residential brand of Data Land Inc. 5 Ds. 1. Desirable Destination. 2. Delightful Amenities. 3. Deal is Real. 4. Dedicated Property Management. 5. Along Magsaysay Boulevard, Santa Mesa, Manila. Both towers on RFO, 40 stories. Minutes away from central business districts, universities, shopping malls, and other places of interest. The Olive Place. Along Shaw Boulevard, Mandaluyong. Metro Manila's center of gravity. Tower 1 pre-selling. Turnover of Tower 1, December 2020. The Mirren Enclaves, Palawan, voted as the best island in the world. Puerto Princesa City, minutes away from the mall, hospital, schools, and other places of interest, can be used for Airbnb. Two hectares, 184 units, landed condo concept, target market, empty nesters, retirement place for both locals and foreigners, investors. Chalcedony Place, Santa Ana, Manila, minutes away from Makati CBD and SM All of Asia. 4,900 square meters land area. Two towers, total of 1,200 plus units. Combination of studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom. Community mall at ground and second floor. Target market, upgraders. Professionals and BPO employees. Empty nesters. My cube, Binyan Laguna. Walking distance from University of Perpetual Health Medical Square Meters. 663 units. Studios. Target market, investors. Manila residents but working in Laguna. Employee visitors of Laguna. Companies who can use this as an alternative to hotel. Data Land Leisure, the Ivy Wall Hotel Palawan, the only DOT accredited four star hotel in Puerto Princess. The Ivy Wall Hotel Bohol, the first international chain resort in Panglao Island, Bohol. El Nido Palawan, hotel project, 8,000 square meters. Data Land Offices, V 
the offices at the Olive Place, Corporate Office Floors, DDT Group Headquarters, DDT Sky Tower, Edsa Corner Mother Ignacia, Quezon City, iconic building in Quezon City, 60 floors, tallest building along Edsa, 5,300 square meters land area, 115K total gross floor area. 24-7 building for BPOs and corporate offices. Province, first integrated regional township project. 17 hectares, mall, hotel, office buildings and residentials. Napsan, Palawan. One hour away from Puerto Princesa City, 180 hectares with a beachfront. Leisure integrated community through ecotourism. Man made land. Hotel, hiking, biking trails. Data Clark Global City, Clark Pampanga. One hour away from Manila, 2.3 hectares. Data land. Quality beyond the basics. And welcome to Data Land Residential's Quality Life Webinar Series. I am your host, Giselle, and I am honored to help you in this journey of living a quality life in the new normal. This is the third webinar of Dataland Residential's Quality Life series intended to guide you through the home buying process so that you can live a full life in the home of your dreams. This involves being aware of your needs, searching for information, evaluating your choices that will lead to the actual purchase of your dream home. To assist you thoroughly, we have made the home buying process easier than ever so you can transact safely online and avail of limited time only deals available only this August. Enjoy monthly amortization as low as 6,900 pesos. Enjoy low spot down payment and get gift certificates upon booking and turnover. Get as much as 250,000 worth of gift certificates when you reserve a unit until the last week of August 2020. Moreover, get a chance to win Sodexo online gift certificates if you are the first to answer correctly in our pop quiz question that will be flashed on screen and stay tuned for the announcement of the winners before the end of the program. We will also raffle off Sodexo gift certificates for our first 100 registrants after our talk. For Dataland, living a quality life is more than just living in the home of your dream. It makes life better. It is making informed and filled with life decisions. One must be armed with all the necessary information needed. This is why we have arranged this series of talks by industry experts to help you make the right life-changing choice of acquiring your very own home. In these difficult times of the pandemic, we see the importance of navigating the new normal with ease and inspiration. Living a full life in the new normal can be challenging. Allow me now to introduce our guest speaker. He is the Associate Director for the Investment and Capital Markets Team at Santos Knight Frank. He is responsible for determining the applicable, visible, and most effective strategies in terms of real estate investments. He conducts financial analysis and provides sound recommendations to investors on deal structures, acquisition, and disposition strategies in real estate and facilitates property market and the different investment opportunities across the real estate sector. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Industry expert, Mr. Cash Salvador. Hi, Sir Cash. Hi. Hold on. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and I'm glad to, you know, um, be a part of this, and hopefully I get to share. Um, 
early as now, we extend our gratitude to you now, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess um, to start with, um, I'd like to share actually an entire presentation regarding property investing tips. Okay, to start off again, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you to Rowan and the team of Dataland um, for allowing us to, to do this because we know that we're, we're in a pandemic and we have our limitations when it comes to moving around and also identifying the investments in the market. So this afternoon, hopefully I, I get to share my insights and then um, hopefully you learn something from me. All right, so just a quick background of who we are. We are Santos Knight Frank. We're a real estate service company. We've been in the industry. You can see in the picture, um, this was pre-COVID, of course. Um, this was, I think, November 2019. And we had over uh, 1,400 people by for that time. Um, regarding these lines, we, have, we do a lot of services. I am involved in the investments in capital markets. As uh, Giselle mentioned, I do a lot of the acquisition and disposition, so properties that are being sold, um, large, big ticket properties, um, country cross-border transactions as well. We do a lot of office leasing, property management, valuation and appraisals, project management, facilities management. We, do, we also have a team of research, researchers and consultants. Um, asset management, residential sales and leasing, and lastly, technical services. We have an office in Metro Manila, um, which is in Makati, which is in Cebu, to cover most of the Visayas and Mindanao region. Okay, so let's do a recap and let's, you know, the COVID period under, like, under the quarantine for the Philippines. Uh, and the lockdown tayo. It's hard for us to go around. And um, these, these instances um, have never happened before. So we're, we're facing two kinds of crisis, which both stem from COVID-19. One is securing the health and safety of the people. And number two is maintaining the economy. Philippines has now the highest COVID-19 cases in Southeast Asia, 202,000. Um, there, there's, there's no lying about it. Um, we're, we're kind of moving forward and we'll try, we're trying to look past, you know, the, the cases and try to find a safe solution, but really try to boost up the economy still. Because as we know, last second quarter of 2020, it was reported that the economic output of our entire country dropped by 16.5%. So this is the lowest quarterly 81. Um, it's also good to know that, you know, the second quarter, um, one quarter is three months. That was two of the three quarters we've been in ECQ. So hindi talaga nakalabas ang tao. Like the, the economy sort of stood still. Nagkaroon tayo ng limbo era or limbo period na hindi alam ng mga tao kung ano yung gagawin. When it comes to their businesses, it was hard for them to, to navigate. Um, that's why this was the impact. We've also seen less remittances due to, the pand due to the pandemic. We all know a lot of those W's had to return back to the country. Some of them lost their jobs. That's why young remittances um, went down by 6.4% lower compared to the same period of January to May 2019. Um, we see some... Uh, we, we know that it's hard for, for a, a lot of people, um, but we just have to uh, be smart investors in handpicking which assets um, we, we can put. Also seen an increase. Uh, I know in the major market, but we'll, we'll try to know the, the sentiments that it comes to investing. So unemployment is now at 17.7%, so we, which leaves 7.3 million Filipinos unemployed. Um, so it, it's getting harder and harder for us. So, but like with every dark path, um, there are, there are opportunities in the market. One good sign is that we still have our, a good credit rating, despite the unfavorable con uh, market conditions. Um, 
we still have a stable outlook according to the credit rating agencies um, such as Moody's, S&P, Japan, and Fitch Ratings. So given all this, given all the realities that I just mentioned, question is, how do you invest in real estate during this crisis, right? So we know that we're in a hard position right now. And what we usually say, um, given that we need a lifeline right now for our economy, so our solution for I'm not talking about myself as, as my name is cash as well, but prioritize cash, prioritize liquidity. Make sure first that you have enough cash for your um, regular spending. I know that medyo, um, dito online din yung schooling, but you still have to pay for the enrollment. So kailangan mo prioritize. I mean, a lot na sa budget yun. And then you, if you have excess cash to invest, or if you have investments, you also have to pivot. So you have to pivot your investments to income generating assets. Kasi meron kami naman na na we know some industries right now are not doing well. And now you have to adapt. You have to change and pivot. And number three is resilience. So you have to reevaluate your business models for your consumers. It's important to listen to them, to listen what they're looking for, what do they need, and um, try to address that for your business. For the real estate market, Number one tip that we uh, number two tip that we can give is um, as a landlord look for a win-win situation. There was a dip when it comes to the um, what do you call this, the occupancy rates for the office market. So we know that maraming companies are going shift to work from home. Maraming companies, um, sad to say, did not need the same amount of space. Did not need the large office spaces, kaya nag decrease sila ng size. So may pressure ngayon sa landlords or na nawawalan sila ng tenants or na for them to lower the rates. Um, what we've seen is that there's a shift from landlords market to consumers market. May mga tenants na nag-request ng rental abatements, may mga um, tenants na nag-request ng delay ng payment as, as the government, you know, instructed or allowed to do so. So as a landlord, we advise now you find that sweet spot, you find that balance to help out your tenants then, to, to, to keep their business and to keep your business. So developers nowadays are offering more flexibility um, and new product offerings. So. What we're saying here is that we've seen, we know that everyone's having a hard time, right? You know, we're trying to save money and you're trying to budget your money. That's why you've seen developers um, be, be more flexible, be sort of be open to negotiate when it comes to the flexibility of payment terms. Um, I would suggest not to take it to take out and then um, they, they're, trying, they're even trying to make it easy for you by increasing the use of omni-channels to market properties. So you can see Facebook, online, websites, that you can still be in the safety of, of your own homes and still invest in real estate uh, assets. Next is be on the lookout for a distressed asset position. This is actually um, something that I do want to focus on when it, with regards to those hard hit real estate sectors. Um, this might be bigger in size, but what we've seen is that some of the hotels, obviously they're not doing well. And then occupancy levels have drastically dropped with one with, in the case of the Philippines, having one of the longest lockdowns in the world. We know that this is domestic tourism that will restart the hospitality industry, but some of the, um, some of the assets in this sector um, are, are, the sad truth is, opportunities in this sector that you know you can look at and when it comes to acquiring in the in, in this sector it's because here in our next slide you can see the performance that we've seen for the hotel this is just actually metro manila and um these are really low levels that we haven't seen ever for these assets so we know that during the community quarantine period um it, there were only uh, a couple of hotels to OFWs or 
to cater to the PPOs or to those uh, um, accommodation forces. Yeah, um, be on the lookout for in, for opportunities in this sector as well. Um, here, yeah, you want you might want to monitor market delinquencies. We know that some of the loans are not you know pushing through or like so are not being able to complete. We've seen we, we've seen we're seeing this trend, so you might want to take a look at that. Um, for I know it's hard in doing uh, in, in buying for close properties. And you might want to evaluate that first before you start buying off in their list. And then um, from what we know, um, there is usually a lag effect. What, what do I mean by a lag effect when it comes to pricing ng real estate? We know their economy is kind of in a crunch time right now, pero hindi ka agad nagda-drop or tumataas. Hindi ganun kabilis nagmumove ang prices when it comes to real estate. The, um, so what you want Um, and, and try to evaluate your propensity or your cash flow with regards to buying them and using them for what purpose. Kasi syempre kailangan mong tignan kung ano yung income na madadala ng, ng real estate assets na mabibili mo ngayon. Okay, next is take advantage of borrowing. So the Philippine interest rates continue to go down with the Bank Central of, Filip of uh, ng Pilipinas slashing the RRP interest rate to 2.25%. Because this is something that we um, we need to boost up the economy. So we we the, the banks are lowering their interest rates for people to borrow, and it's good to take advantage of that now. Um, like I said, you 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 just check first your cash levels before you try to uh, you try to to buy real estate. But and and if you do, um, it it's really I would say it's a good time to borrow money for real estate. Um, these are the rates that we've seen. The, the four to five years, 8%, um, 7.2 to 20, 0.25% for BPI as, as we go forward. We also have Security Bank here um, and RCBC. Yung ibang banks nag, ano na sila, nag adjust na talaga sila. Um, so, binabana nila yung, this is for mortgage loans, of course, for real estate. So we're, we're given this instance or given this situation, we, we advise now if you want to buy and want to borrow money for it, and you're good for and you can get clearance from. This is prepare for industry changes. So I think th this is something more bigger in scale, because um, they're actually proposing the fifth law, financial institution strategic transfer law. So it's designed to insulate the banking industry from rising non-performing loans. As we know, um, there is a level um, of threshold na pwedeng ipahiram ng banks when it comes to loans. So may limit sila ng pwedeng ipahiram. And with this, and uh, na na-experience nilang may bad debt or may mga hindi, uh, hindi nagtutuloy na loan, they can't even lend further hindi, pa sila, hindi sila mapagpahiram pa kasi nga nandun pa sila sa limit. If ever, um, or malapit na sila sa limit na yon. So, ang, ang ginagawa ng FIST law is they allow the, these non-performing loans to be transferred to a different entity so that the bank can actually lend more. Um, and it will actually allow also kung ibibente yung mga non-performing loans um, na nailipat sa ibang company, sa ibang entity na tinatarget. Uh, next, you want to utilize digital plat. So um, we want to be um, effective but safe. So here we have the Electronic E-Commerce Act of 2002. It's designed to make electronic contracting legally enforceable. So e-documents as the legal equivalent of paper documents, e-signatures as the legal. Know that this is in place, so it, it doesn't actually ham and, uh, hinder you it doesn't stop you from making investments. And to add more, recently, the Supreme Court allowed remote notarization of paper documents through video conference facilities in the interim. So, kahit yung pagnotario hindi siya problema, um, you can actually still do it in the safety and comfort of your own homes. So, um, you have to go out there and risk your life just to do real estate investment. 
identify real estate opportunities. You want to see the market, track the market, you want to have a big picture para alam mo kung saan pwede mag-invest. Here, one of the um, trends that we've seen is that the, the demand for warehousing pulled up by e-commerce activities. Alam natin na medyo dumadami yung mga pinagbibili natin lately sa mga Lazada, Shopee, marami tayong online shopping, and itong pagbili natin na to is naka-increase ng demand sa kinakailangan nilang storage where pang real estate assets sort of nila storage facilities. Mayroon mga old buildings kami nakita sa Manila that um, initially the owner wanted you know an office to occupy it um, just you know fit it out and things like that. Pero nung nakita niya yung demand for this one um Rather than trying to focus on tenants na office lang, ang ginawa nila is they allowed you know the the group the, the e-commerce groups to to rent out the spaces. Storage facility talaga, dinamit nila or inalaw nilang magamit para sa para don because alam nila nandun yung demand. Um, there is an increase in cold storage space requirements. Um, we know that food security is very important nowadays. And one of the things that can improve food security for a country is cold storage. So, which is why this is also this is also an area or segment in the industry that is growing. So, um, yung um, yung warehousing um, opportunities natin. So, meron tayong gradual shift to automated warehousing models. Tapos, um, continuous investments and expansions in Bulacan, Pampanga, Tarlac, and Southern Tagalog provinces. So, itong industry na to, warehousing, manufacturing, logistics, yan. Um, Tinitignan tayo, nag-grow pa rin yung segment na yan ngayon. And um, I think because there's really a shift of the need growing even for 2021 or 2022. Um, another trend that we saw when it comes to real estate opportunities um, is the office market. Maraming nag nagtanong sa amin eh, na cash, work from home na yung maraming companies. Kakailangan pa ba namin ng opisina? So, um, I think for some businesses, kinakailanganan nila, kina um, yung, yung cash flow nila, kinakailangan nilang mag, mag sort of um, liitan yung hindi kayang or hirap na hirap silang mag-work from home. Kaya kailangan pa rin nilang ng office space. For example, um, there's IT BPO sector that is resilient in terms of the growth. Um, why do we say this? It's because um, yung ibang, uh, you have so many employees and then hindi, hindi ganun ka-reliable yung internet connection na nakukuha nila sa, bah sa bahay nila. That's number one. So they are not able to do their job Pangalawa is data security. May mga, um, lalo na sa financial sector ng BPO, nahirap, uh, hindi nila usually talaga inaalaw na dalhin yung data, dalhin yung information into other, to any other network apart from the office network. And then they'd have, they would, um, they, did, they had to ask permission pa from the, from the clients of the BPOs before nila pinayagan mag-work from home. And even and even then, there 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 are still risks. You mga companies na to, kaya for them in operating their business, and kinakailangan pa rin nila talaga magkaroon ng office space. Um, we also see in this sector, na green buildings will emerge for healthier living and workspace environment. So, having a uh, better air around your office. Um, with the proper air conditioning system, air handling units, uh, yung isa sa mga ka sort of tulong para sa mga tenants natin. Um, some of the uh, well, the, some of the good trends that we've seen as well is that people see uh, people see more space uh, is considered more safer or safer. More space is safer. Ibig sabihin, nag, um, tumingin yung mga tao sa um, outside Metro Manila. So as you can see, 
um, we've stated here that preference for residential properties outside Metro Manila CBD spiked during the East who is who normally lives na walking distance lang or isang jeepney ride away from their from their office kumuha sila ng condo nagrent sila malapit doon um nung nag ECQ period they, they they actually tried to go home to their you know to their houses wherever they are even though it's usually 3 hours away 2 hours away from their from their office nag stay sila doon it's safer and then um they felt that if they're, they're with their families, it's, it's, it's much only Bay Area in Alabang had the positive absorption. Um, moving outside Metro Mila to mass the new increase in demand for, for houses. Actually, we saw it um, in the other range of markets in the high-end na luxury and luxury um, type of developments. Sa high-end income earners, high-income earners. Nakita namin talaga na tumingin pa sila ng mga beach houses na mabibili kasi nga wala silang resorts na mapuntahan. Ganun yung naging dynamics na from Metro Manila. So tumas, nakita talaga namin siyang tumaas. To add to that, there are infrastructure projects connecting the provinces. Tapos i-combine mo pa siya with the Balik Provincia Program of the government. It is now really creating demand, demand outside Metro Manila. So um, it's it's good to take a look at opportunities there. Um, if if you try to combine, you know, their industrial expansions, you try to look at repurposing or um, pivot Manila. Um, those that that combination really does help um, securing or less lessening the risk that you're gonna take with your real estate investments. So in a nutshell, like just to wrap it up, we have roughly around six points. Number one, know the current macroeconomic conditions that may affect your investment performance. So alamin mo kung ano yung mga nangyayari and ano yung mga pwedeng mangyari. Um, number two is prioritize liquidity. Again, try to look for good investments. If you have the cash, um, then you're, you're in a really good position. Number three is look for fairly priced, distressed, and value for money properties. So um, I think we mentioned some ano yung mga sectors na medyo distress, ano yung, ano yung areas na pwedeng fairly priced and value for money kanina. Uh, next is take note of the current interest rates imposed on mortgage loans. I, like I said, it's, it's, um, it's good to take advantage of the low, the Four, uh, sorry, number five is take advantage of digital platforms. Um, I, I know that every, uh, like the, the, the companies um, and the government is trying to push for better internet connections um, for, for the entire country. And um, it's for our own safety, take advantage of the digital platforms that the companies are building now and are offering. Um, it, it's really just safe and effective. Last is be on the lookout for trends and opportunities in the real estate. Um, but you know, like I said, um, every day merong mga bagong balita, meron tayong bagong um, you, you don't want to overwhelm yourself also with information. Stick to, um, to, see, to secure and um, reliable assets. Um, like I said, real estate is something that is tangible that is there, that you can actually, uh, pwede mo siya ipamana sa mga magiging anak mo. That's why it's, as always, and um, other assets. And um, hopefully, um, you do get to invest it. And um, we're here to help you out, identify, or we're, we're here to help you out in, in whatever way we can. So thank you very much. And I think that concludes my presentation. Um, Giselle, I think if, uh, if the people have questions, um, we're open. Right. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Sir Cash. Thank you very much for sharing your valuable and informative insights on property investing in the new normal. So indeed, opportunities abound even in the midst of crisis and understanding and appreciating how real estate investing works is important. So for your questions to our dear audience and guests 
here, please type in your question po at the chat box at the right. Okay, so before we proceed, okay, to our uh, Q&A portion, let's watch this video of MyCube, Dataland's flagship dormital project offering the utmost comfort and convenience at the heart of the booming Southern Hub in Binyan, Laguna. The Innovative space planning. Beautiful and functional units. Spend less time commuting and have more personal time at MyCube. MyCube is strategically located at the growth center of the South, near schools and colleges, transport hubs, business establishments, malls, hospitals, and churches in the emerging city of Binyan, Laguna. MyCube's enhanced living philosophy provides students, professionals, and Enjoy bigger space in a studio or deluxe unit. An environment that nurtures your physical and mental health. And wealth. Graded amenities such as a study hall with Wi-Fi connection. MyCube is an ideal investment that provides year-round rental income for investors and weekday home for students and professionals working in Laguna's economic zones. The development is professionally managed to ensure quality living and allows your investment value to increase over time. MyCube. The DDT Group of Companies and a Triple A Construction Company. The perfect home away from home. The ideal living and learning environment. My Cube, your best investment. Land Residentials.
of my cube data land stand out dormital project centrally located along the bustling manila south road in binyan laguna we also saw the data land residentials august promo offering limited time only deals available only this august 2010 ladies and gentlemen let us now proceed with our question and answer portion i'm sure our audience learned a lot from mr cash's very informative talk and maybe you have questions so our first question Actually, is for the first question, Sir Cash, are you there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. What are the anticipated future developments that may encourage property investors to invest in office inventories? Okay. Um, I think, Sir Free, to answer your question, um, we're actually looking at. Um, well, the invest property investors that we're we're, we're talking to uh, for the office segment, many of them are actually um, on a wait and see period right now. They want to see how you know the what are the big impacts that the COVID nineteen will happen for this industry. So, ang um, ina expect namin, uh, well, what we expect from developers as well. Some of them have explored the idea of using the capital markets, which means they're looking for partners, or they're looking, or they're looking to put their assets into. Our when it comes to taking in um, more investors for their project, um, in um, we know that there are only few office um, buildings actually that are sort of selling when it comes to. Uh, when in when for a strata title type of asset, uh, but for now the investors that we've talked to, they're asking um, if there is an impact already in pricing, where wherein we 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 obviously see pressure, but there are no strong movements to say that it has moved as an industry yet. So um, I think what they will, I think what developers or the investors will try to do is to try to sort of look din muna. Um, they're, they're actually, we're actually seeing some more, for lack of a better term, um, opportunistic buyers right now when it comes to um, office inventories. I guess uh, we need to look into the, what's gonna happen no, sa office sector natin, no? Sir Cash. Para yeah. at least interested na ulit mga investors to buy. Oh, they're, 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 well, what they're looking at now is the, the impact on occupancy and rents. Kung bababa ba talaga yung occupancy and rents with the shifting mm. of work from home. Um, pero what we do know is that um, it is sort of decentralizing, which means to your, ano, to your office. office. If, yeah, Correct. if it's a business that can work in such a way, there are businesses na kailangan talaga ng collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, iba yung, iba yung um, efficiency ng, ng ibang tao, iba din yung uh, results na nabibigay with the collaboration that is being brought by, ano, by you know, working in the office. The office, like, you know, personally you're there with your office mates, no? Iba din kasi talaga satellite offices in different areas no i mean where the employees you know live closer <laughs> correct and also with that na the disperse money yung 
uh, I mean, you increase the safety of your employees by not, you know, cramping them in one space. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Plus the exposure pa kasi that they get outside eh, once they travel going to the office. Oh. All right. Thank you, Sir Cash. And now uh, for our second question, actually, it's from Sir Sid. Rated surge in foreclosed properties will affect mm. the present pre-development or the pre-selling inventories of the developers. Okay. Um, the general, I think, impact of the, the surge in foreclosed properties is it's going to compete, right, with the pre-selling products. It's it's just you know economics. But what people mm. will try to look at is um, the the sort of the convenience. Um, in terms of buying foreclosed properties because it will always be on an asset various basis. Um, it will also uh, have, I think, that, that redemption period. Um, so I think with and, and the, the paperwork involved with that, if, if, the, if an owner or like if an investor is willing, is open and is used to doing that, then he'll probably take a look at foreclosed properties. But to the general public who are not as savvy with doing that, um, yeah, taking in assets and then as is where it is. Because there are, there are instances na, um you have to check really what's the condition of the property when it comes to foreclosed assets. It's possible na may tenant pa doon na hindi pa napapalis. That happens mm. in, here in the Philippines. Um, but apart from that, um, if, if you have the time, you have the energy and you're very, uh, I don't know, if you're real estate savvy din talaga, you might, you will take a look at that, but that you know will be delivered to you, um, that will be of good quality. I would suggest trying to take a look at pre-selling projects or if it's selling, but yeah, or, or if RFO, it's also possible, but as long as it's it's a good because if it's something na lala na kung titirhan mo, it, it's yun yung isa sa mga alam mo yon hindi lang mm-hmm. basta numbers ang tinitigdan mo eh. when it when it's an asset that you're gonna live in or it's a house that you're gonna live in, um mas mas antay to mas meticulous ka. That's correct, no. That's also ang tanong din kasi don sir cash is if you have the enough cash you know, na pwede mo ilabas right now. Kasi usually, di ba, kapag ano, mga foreclosed, they demand na yung mga cash talaga, bayaran. Ah, yes, that's true. Uh, medyo mas malaki yung kailangan mong ilabas na down payment um, versus um, doing a pre-selling project. Uh, I know that you can uh-huh. only, you, you can ask them still evaluate your cash flow, your income, before they grant you that. True, true. Tsaka sobrang tedious din nung paperwork eh. <laughs> no, Sir Cash? That's true. That's true. Um, mm-hmm. we, I, I've, gone, I've gone through looking at those. We've had, we have clients who, meron talaga, if, if sanay ka, yes, it, that's okay. Um, it, it won't bother you. Pero um, to the general public, and if it's, for example, what I, what I usually say is, real estate is entire lifetime. So, medyo worried ka na parang saan mapupunta yung pera ko. So, with that, you really want a good product and sort of a safety net that you're going to be delivered a good product. That's true. You know, good quality product for a, uh, you know, good amount of investment. Okay. Another follow-up question, Sir Cash, from Sir Seth Frey. How would the pending proposed fiscal policies like, like create affect the real estate? Um, ito yung, um, well, the, the, the tax incentives, I think, um, will definitely help. Um, I think, I'm not sure if the, 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 they're try, they will try to include the, the FIST law or there's the CDVs na ilalagay sa under the CREATE pag sa, pag, sa pagdating sa approval. So, um, I guess if they're going to put in the FIST law, I, that would really help the real estate market. I, I mentioned earlier that they will transfer the non-performing loans of banks to a different entity and use, and that entity will be the one to handle, to manage whether it's they're going to dispose it or they're going to turn it around. 
it's going to be a different entity for the banks to be able to lend more. Para makapagpahiram pa yung banko sa pag-invest ng mga tao sa real estate. And to add to that, recently they, increased, they were trying to increase the threshold of banks. We have this threshold kasi, um, by the BSP na ang, sa loan portfolio ng banks, hanggang 20% lang dapat yung involved sa real estate. I think, um, uh, don't, I, I'm not sure if it's already um, approved, but I think um, it was um, Benjamin Jokno who said they're trying to increase it by 20 to 25%. So that will definitely help in terms of more money to be invested in real estate. Okay. Well, we are looking forward to that new fiscal policy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, we have another question, uh, Pastor Cash. What do you recommend would be the best use for commercial lots or units at this time, aside from the usual warehouse or parking? Okay. Um, I, to, to, wait, I, I'd like to share a little, a small story then, Muna, about warehousing and parking recently. Okay. Um, we've, what we've seen recently is some of the malls and office buildings are actually leasing out their parking space as warehouse. Wow. So, um, to be fair, it's a warehouse for foreclosed cars. So, um, yung mga narimatang kotse, um, rather than looking for a warehouse to put the cars in, yung mga banks, they leased out the uh, the car park and malls. Tapos na dun nila muna inilalagay yung foreclosed cars. And then another thing is that I we we've seen that some of the um, some it's not the the very big malls but the smaller ones um, they're repurposing their their um, their mall, which means that. They're accepting short-term storage and warehouse instead of just uh, no, um, operating it fully as a shopping mall. When it comes to warehouse space, because yung mga parking ginagawa nilang warehouse, yung ibang shopping malls tapat, yung parts non ginagamit na rin nilang for warehouse. Now, to answer your question, I know I digress at that point, but um, to answer your question, what would be the use for commercial lots or units at this time? Um, number one, take a look at the, are you willing to lease it out long term? Because for if you want to, if you're open to not using it for a long time, you can actually look for um, they will build the warehouse themselves. So parang purely land lang yung contribution mo, and then um, they will be leasing out sila mag operate ng sablin ng warehouse. Um, or if not, um, I would suggest then uh, it's um, ako depende ganon um, halaki yung property mo na kasi baka you want you might want to look at the opportunity cost. But recently, what's moving right now really is really involved in the warehousing business. Uh, uh, we know that the shopping malls are heavily hit hard, and then for the office market, medyo hindi pa rin sure. We're seeing ano den atao dito yung looking for more people looking for more space when it comes to residential, na something medyo mas maluwag from where they are, and then yung iba den um, they they opt to sort of look they they're trying to look for their own house na, kasi ang nangyayari is um why two or three households. Now, dati kasi parang, oh, sige, lagi sila nasa labas, hindi naman sila madalas nakikita sa bahay. So they don't feel na sobrang congested sila sa bahay. But now that everyone's at home, they feel that and they're now looking for another house or like, they're looking for um, their own place to live in. Okay. So most likely, uh, like converting the residential to like uh, residential, no, yun yung nakikita mong recommendations or um, cash? It's put, yes. Uh, like check first the location kasi yung commercial lots na tinitinan ko ngayon, if really, if it's right next to a mall, I would suggest start to um, explore the idea of a warehouse. Or if there are some, there are actually some companies din kasi na mm -hmm. continuously looking for properties to lease out. 
So, nagahanap pa rin sila na, okay, sige, lilease natin to long term. Hindi natin kailangan maglabas ng cash ngayon na kailangan natin magpatayo kagad. But we've secured the location. 15 years. At least na-secure na natin yung location na yan moving forward if we want to expand there. And they're willing to um, take the risk of paying the rent um, kasi nga for land lang siya. Um, just to uh, no, prepare themselves na if the, the market picks up, they can actually, you know, start building on it na. Yeah. That's the time to take advantage na, no? Kasi they secured na the, the area. That's good. Okay. Sir, uh, there's another question naman uh, from Miss Donita uh, Hernandez. Is it safe to secure a condo during this pandemic? What is the insurance or maybe assurance for the investors? You know, just in case they will be affected by the pandemic. Um, in in securing a condo, I am I'm, I'm not sure if the question is for buying or renting one. Um, for if if you're buying one, insurance fits the virus that you're 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 um, worried about. Um, I guess number one is really to. To, to check the, the property management protocols that, you know, that condo is implementing. Um, you might want to check look, who is their property manager because um, I, I would say na property management is also a frontliner during this, you know, during this pandemic. Calls, paano ano yun sa elevator, paano yung pagpasok ng mga tao. Ano yung PPEs ng security guards? Ano yung, so, how do they um, how do they sort of reach out and connect with the LGUs pagdating sa pag-handle ng mga um, positive or PUIs? So, naging frontliner sila during this. So, I would I advise to take a look at who the property management is and what their protocol, uh, safety protocols are. Um, in securing in... Hindi, hindi na, for example, hindi na insure kasi yung price or na insure mo yung condo, but hindi mo na insure yung price na it will stay at that level. So it's really an investment, so there will still be risk. Um, but in securing one, like I mentioned, take advantage of digital platforms. Um, it it is uh, it is valid, so um, you can actually transact um, in the safety and comfort of your own homes. It's the buyer's market, eh, right? Because of the pandemic, so somehow they can, you know, negotiate. That that is true. Um, we've seen tenants na negotiate sila ng price when it comes to renewals of their leases. So we've also seen um, people try to negotiate. Kasi nga, if if um, like more people need uh, need cash, and if you're in a position now, uh, over the, you know that person, the other person. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so Sir Cash, actually, uh, our VP for Sales and Marketing, Mr. Rowen Abel Raz, would like to add on uh, to you know your answer to our uh, guest, Sir Rowen. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, Cash. Hi, Rowan. All right. Okay. Um. I'd like to add to what Cash is saying. No? Uh, number one, critical nga yung property management team. Uh, let me tell you that the Silk Residences, which is actually a, an RFO project, uh, it's actually being occupied now by residents, uh, by Data Land. Ang Santos Knight is the property manager, and they're very strict. No? Uh, number one, you really need, you, they really follow the safety protocols. No? Uh, at the moment, I think uh, they're not yet allowing guests uh, to go inside the uh, the, the condo. I think if there will be deliveries, uh, there is a designated area where you can actually place your deliveries. I mean, if it's, a, it's critical that uh, I think they have uh, utility people, helpers who, who make sure that uh, the lobby, the elevator areas are actually very clean. So I think they sanitize it every hour. And at the moment, I think this applies to all most condo developments. Uh, at the moment, um, developers or projects are not allowing 
the use of the uh, gym, the swimming pool, hindi pa pinapagamit yan. So, ako, I'm a condo dweller. I think uh, when, I, when, you, when you probably ask, is it safe to actually stay, reside in a condo when there's a pandemic? Yes. Because number one, uh, what you just want to make sure is there are safe, in fact, I think the safety protocols are being, are strictly in, in, uh, implemented by the property management team compared to say living in a barangay. The association you should pay for, for those services. They will be very strict. Uh, at, uh, I think that's the reason why I say the condo dwellers are to a certain extent uh, more safe uh, than say living in a barangay. Yes, that's true. Totally agree. Okay, thank you, Sir Roman. For adding yes, yes. more information to us. Yes. And I think, you know, I think maganda yung point ni Cash. Na, sabi ni Cash, if you're looking at opportunities, ano ba yung may parang, uy, sandali, uy, big discount. Ayan, opportunity yan. The opportunity that I'm actually now saying is because we are now also promoting MyCube, which is our first dormital project in Binyan. You know, the price is, I think, between 2.1 to, I think, 2.5 million. Remember, by next year, the government will try to support the loans that they took out during the pandemic by, of course, ensuring that taxes will be paid. Because you have to remember, ang, ang revenue stream ng government is really through taxes, which means they will be strict in implementing the resolo that says if you're buying a condo at the at this point no the 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 cap is 3.1 to 3.1 to 2 if you are buying a condo less than 3.1 wala pang bat beyond 3.1 to 2 may bat now yes by next year they will be strictly implementing the RESA law and they will actually say, actually the RESA law, it's a, it's a train law that we, they'll be implementing. Magtatak siyan at 2 million. So if you purchase the MyCube uh, unit now, uh, between now until December, wala pang bat. Pagdating ng January 1, that will be 12% higher in terms of a price. I think... That's what Cash is saying. Take advantage of the opportunities. And at the moment, we are only, uh, if you buy a unit, you're only paying 6900 monthly. Wow. I mean, so that's an opportunity. Yeah, that's correct. Perfect time to buy. Yes. Yes. Overpriced yes, without yes. paying taxes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Okay, we have another question pa from Sir JP. For long-term investors looking at raw land, where do you suggest buyer name the title? Individual or corporate ownership? Hmm. Okay. Um, normally, it would depend on, sa, sa, for example, what you're going to use it for. Um, pero if you're looking at uh, what they call this... Um, Acquisition, because I, I always take a look at investments in two angles. One is entry or acquisition, and then the other is exit. So, any yung mga transaction costs or exit costs na kita ko um, with regards to buying uh, raw land. Um, if if ownership is not an issue, which means that you don't have, really have to share it with with someone, or kung ka pa ng corporate um, structure, kasi may shareholders ka, then you're required to. But um, I would advise it individual. Mung malipat siya through a share structure. So um, you, you might want to take a look at um, individual. For corporate kasi, um, there's also such a thing as maintenance cost with your corporation. So um, hindi pwedeng nag-exist lang yung company mo. Tapos wala, walang gagawin. Um, do you also have, there are requirements that you have to submit um, when, when you've put up a corporation. So if you're, um, 
there are also benefits in terms of taxes. I, I think um, it's sa, sa buyers kasi, um, pag sitinignan mo yung corporate ownership, yung due diligence na kadikit nun, tinitignan pa nila ano yung business na ano yung corporation. Tinitignan nila if there are liabilities pagdating sa share structure. So, um, it's easier, cleaner, really to do an asset sale if it's individual or corporate ownership. Uh, kasi yung risk naman sa individual is sometimes if you're putting multiple names in a title and then um, may, may experience kasi ako na tipong hindi na si kaso nung iba when it comes to estate planning wherein, for example, knock on wood, na um, one of the persons uh, or one person in the title passed away and then hindi nasikasa yung pag-transfer sa heirs. Um, medyo it gets... So if, if, if it's not an issue, go for individual. Um, and then if it's not an issue also of the use or needing to share it, that's fine as well. All right. Thank you for that answer, uh, Sir Cash. I guess uh, that's the last question that we have for our session. So thank you very much, Sir Cash, for that very inspiring talk. And again, thank you for enlightening us on the opportunities in property investing in time of crisis and showing us ways to take advantage of them. These tips are indeed just in navigating the new normal. Thank you for reminding us that living a full life in the new normal is indeed possible with the right information to make the right life choices. I am sure our audience were able to pick up a lot of learning, so thank you so much. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for now. So once again, we'd like to thank you for all uh, gracing us with your presence. We urge everyone to take the opportunity to live a quality life and make the right home choice and available our home, online home buying process so you can transact safely online. Enjoy low monthly amortization for as low as 6,900 pesos. Enjoy low spot down payment and get gift certificates upon booking and turnover. And get as much as 250,000 worth of gift certificates when you reserve a unit today. So before we officially close the program, we would like to flash on screen muna yung adding three pop quiz questions. So our audience, are you our audience ready na kayo to answer our questions? I hope na nakapag take down notes from uh, Sir Cash discussion. Okay, are we guys ready? Okay, so the first person who can give us the right answer will get one thousand worth of so Dexo gift certificates. So please send us your name, full name, sorry, uh, home address and contact number. Okay, so once sinabi po namin na kayo ang nakakuha ng correct start for our first pop quiz question. By how much has the Philippine GDP declined in the second quarter of 2020? Anyone? All right. Ayan na po. May mga sumasagot na. Okay. So our team... Please take notes. Sino po ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot? Let us know kung sino po nakakuha ng right answer. Okay. Our first winner for the pop quiz question number one is Sir Sedfre Laksamana. Congratulations, Sir Sedfre. So please share with us your full name, home address, and contact number. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Okay, moving on to our second pop quiz question. What is the name of the law that was made to insulate the banking industry from non-performing loans? Okay, ayan po. May mga sumagot na. Okay. Sino po ang unang nakakuha? Nang tamang sagot. Okay, team. Alright. So we have our winner for the second pop quiz question. That is Mr. It's your full name, address, and contact number. 
Okay, congratulations, Sir Mark. Mark Anthony D. Okay, now moving on to our third pop quiz question. Identify one expansion area for industrial developments. Madami to, pero just identify one. Madaming pwedeng There you go. Ayan, may sumasagot na po. Okay. Alright. Team, sino na ba ang nakasagot? Okay. Our winner for the third pop quiz question is Miss Wilma Punzalan. Congratulations, ma'am. So please send us your full name, address, and contact number. All right. So congratulations to all our winners for our pop quiz. Now we will be moving on to our raffle portion. So, we will also raffle off Sodexo Online Gift Certificates to our first 100 webinar registrants. So, now let's show our roulette. Our lucky roulette. There you go. Ayan. Sino kaya ang ating magiging lucky winner for the GCs? There you go. Raffling off our first winner. There you go. We have Miss Myra Quazon. Congratulations, Miss Myra. Uh, please send us your full name, home address, and contact number also. Congratulations. Okay, our second raffle winner is. Kaya. Alright. Sino to? Miss Melody Masong Song. Miss Melody, please share with us your full uh, complete details, home address and contact number. Congratulations, Miss Melody. Now moving on to our last winner for the raffle. Who's the last lucky winner? We have Justin de las Alas. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations po to all the winners of our pop quiz and to all the winners from our raffle draw. Okay. We hope that you enjoyed our third webinar and we invite you once again to our next discussion in our series of informative talks with industry experts on September 9th. the Dataland Facebook page to register to our talks and get updates. Once again, congratulations to our winners and thank you so much for tuning in with us. Stay safe everyone and have a great weekend. Introducing Dataland Residentials Living Beyond the Basics with Dataland Residentials, you can count on our high five with every property. Top-notch amenities that build communities and enrich life. High quality materials and workmanship at great value for money. Dedicated property management to ensure quality living while preserving your investment's value. And the DDT Constract Seal of Durability, so you're sure your home is built to last.